Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my July favorites, tons of goodies. Let's get into it. The first item I have is from Drunk Elephant. It's the D-Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum Garden Glow. This is a temporary liquid bronzer that is jam-packed with antioxidants. Technically, they suggest to apply to your face, chest, legs, anywhere you want for a touch of bronze and to mix it in with a pump of your favorite moisturizer. It's hydrating. It doesn't affect the feel of my moisturizer. It blends out so beautifully. It's not streaky. You don't look muddy. It has a gold shimmer running through it that you can really see when you first pump it out, but as you blend it into the skin, it just looks like it's blurring your skin out. I find that when I use this with my moisturizer, I can get away with just a little bit of concealer like under my eyes around my nose and I'm good like it looks like I'm wearing a full face of makeup and I have a lot of yellow in my skin so anything that is too orange looks so so oompa loompa -y on me but this stuff works great I wish it would come in a larger size I feel like I'm running out of this so quickly but let me show you guys what it looks like on the skin so it does come with a little pump so you can see the glow on my hand but then when I blend it in, it just looks like luminosity. Now, unfortunately, this is the only shade. I hate when brands do that. It makes no sense to me. Right now, it works for me to give me a little bit of glow or primarily to even my face out with the rest of my body that is a little more tan. Now, if you have this skin tone or deeper, you can use this and it'll still give you that antioxidant benefit and a lot of luminosity, but you're not gonna get that sun-kissed glow tan effect from it, unfortunately. So hopefully, Drunk Elephant comes out with more shades of this because it really is awesome. My next favorite is a newer foundation from Dior. It's the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. My shade is 3W0, which is 3 Warm Olive. This is part of their new Backstage collection, which I thought was cool. They released it with the concept that these were the products they were using behind the curtains of their runway shows for Fashion Week and whatnot. What I really love about this foundation, though, is that it feels like skin, it looks like skin, it's medium to medium buildable full coverage and it's sweat proof and waterproof. I personally really like applying this with my fingers which is so strange. I'm not a finger makeup person but there are certain face products recently that I feel just work really well with your body's natural heat and this happens to be one of them. This doesn't apply quite to my liking with the damp beauty sponge because I feel like it doesn't really give me as much coverage as I want. It stands up really really well to heat, humidity, sweat. I've worn this for events. It photographs really well with flash photography. Other products layer on top really nicely too and I have just been really really enjoying enjoying this foundation. This product is pretty new from Natasha Denona, but ever since I've gotten it, I have not been able to put it down. It's the Natasha Denona Super Glow. It is a duochrome highlighter, and it comes in three different shades. I have 02 Light Medium is what it's called. I think it's called duochrome because it's flashes of like a champagne -y color with either a lighter silver color for the light shade. This one has more of like a gold flash to it and then the deeper one has a more intense gold flash. So basically the duochrome is going to play with your skin tone to give your skin tone the best highlight. Natasha Denona was using this just like all over the face but it didn't look ashy or discolored in any way and I find that it does give the skin that look where it looks like your skin is just catching light rather than your skin is blindingly highlighted. I don't know if that makes sense. It does not emphasize texture at all. Let me pop some on to show you guys. Okay, so this is a Sigma Extreme Structure Contour. It's a contour brush, but we're just gonna go in with it. So I'm literally just, boop, that's it. That's all that's there. Do you see how that just like, picked it up a couple notches. I mean, a lot of highlighters do this, but what I find interesting is sometimes rather than a gold highlight, I'm looking for a nude highlighter, but nude for my skin tone. So it just looks like glow, but it doesn't look silvery or ashy. And I find that this is exactly that for me. You can wear it with any makeup look, you can wear it without any makeup pretty much, and it'll still look so good. Oh my God, my hair is literally driving me 
insane. I have super fine hair and whenever I blow dry it, it just goes on my head and it makes it look like I have even less hair than I already have. And it also makes my face and my head look huge. Give me some volume, something, anything. So I'm sorry if I keep playing with my hair, but these are the struggles of thin hair. I'm sure some of you know, some of you may not be able to relate. And for those of you who can't relate, enjoy it. Appreciate it. It's time to talk about Pat McGrath Matte Trans Lipsticks. These are expensive. This is a bougie item, but so worth it. I try to be very particular about what I suggest to you guys, and unless I really love a product, I won't suggest it. Every single thing I have bought from Pat McGrath, which is literally at least one shade of every single thing that she has launched, has been so expensive, but so worth it. It is the only brand, I think, that I do not regret purchasing a single item, which is such a bold statement to make, but it's accurate. These matte trans lipsticks have just been go-tos. They are the most luxurious, almost hydrating, fully pigmented matte lipsticks. You only need one layer for full coverage on your lips and once it starts to dry down and through the day as you wear it, it almost becomes a liquid lipstick, but the most comfortable liquid lipstick. Like it feels like nothing is on the lips and it never emphasizes my dry lips. So I have three of my favorites here. I have Venus in Furs, which is this amazing like do you see that? I'm sorry. Let's just take a moment. Mm -hmm. Rewind. Um, can you look at that swatch? One pass. One pass of a lipstick fresh out the tube that is matte. A lot of times with matte lipsticks, you have to kind of like warm them up, especially if you haven't used them for a minute. Venus and Furs, really pretty purpley kind of undertone, mauve -y, cooler tone. And then this one, which is Omi, is more of a brighter but neutral pink. This here is Fembot, which is the brightest pink of the three, and it's a little bit of a paler color. I think I just broke this. Wait, I'm literally so upset. I almost don't want to show this on video because Pat McGrath is my queen. And I know this is not her, obviously, like she wasn't going around packaging all my stuff, but like, this just happened. Oh my God, the gold casing came off from my bullet. It's fine. I can probably use like super glue or nail glue and it'll be okay. None of my other ones are doing that. I'm actually like really trying to yank it now. So one off, I've never had any other issues with them. It is a bummer because it is kind of an expensive lipstick, but like also still just as worth it as when I first started talking about them. I have here, a KKW Beauty Lipstick in the shade Classic K. When she first came out with lipsticks, I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna like these better than any of the other lipsticks that I own, but she did that collab with Makeup by Mario, and Makeup by Mario is a genius, so I picked up one of every single thing, which is how this came into my possession. That being said, this has quickly become one of my most used lipsticks. I love the formula, first and foremost. This is very different from the Pat McGrath lipsticks because it's a true creamy lipstick. Like, it is like that old school lipstick formula and just looks so amazing and like plush on the lips. Another thing that I love about it is funnily enough, one of the things that I didn't think I was gonna like about it initially and that is the shade of Classic K specifically. It is super peachy. I am a nude mauve kind of girl, nude pink kind of girl, not a nude peach kind of girl, but this is what it looks like on my skin and I find myself mixing this in with almost every lipstick. I have this on right now with a Pat McGrath lipstick and it just does an amazing job of either creating almost like an ombre lip or lightening and neutralizing other lipsticks that I reach for constantly. So even now, just on the center. If you have my skin tone or deeper, this lipstick, I would highly suggest trying it. The only thing I really don't like, it smells like a box of crayons. And I know Kim K makes fragrances, so like, can we please input some kind of fragrance into this? Because when I first got it, I was like, I think I got a bad batch. Like, it smells like crayons. It smells like crayons, but like, I'm not gonna stop using it because it's amazing. Another Pat McGrath item here that I need to share with you are her lip glosses. They are just great glosses. 
it sounds so silly, but they are super glossy. The pigmented ones are just pigmented enough that you can use them alone or with other lip products and it doesn't detract from the lip color you're wearing. It just adds a little something. They are not sticky at all. They're so shiny and they last a very long time for being a gloss. I have shade here what? English? I currently own three different shades. I own Dare to Bear, Gold Allure, and Flesh Fantasy. Dare to Bear is a pinky nude. It's almost like a white Russian from Buxom kind of a color, but it has a gold shimmer running through it and almost a shot of like peach pink and then you have gold allure which is a white gloss that is heavily doused with gold and green reflex which sounds strange but honestly on the lips on top of a different color it doesn't look that strange you just have to pair with the right color i think and then flesh fantasy is just an amazing standard nude shade it looks amazing with peachy nudes it looks amazing with pinky nudes mauvey nudes and that right there is flesh fantasy if i were to put flesh fantasy on top of my lips right now which i will just a little bit it just enhances the color that i was already wearing which is just in the nude family the applicators which you can't really see because they have gloss on them but they're a little bit longer and they're kind of curved this way so you can really get your lip completely coated but on this side, which is the under part of the curve, it's actually divoted, so there's tons of product just sitting in a pocket waiting to be used, and you don't need that much of it to get an amazing glossy payoff. My go-to fragrance of the month has been from Replica. It's the Music Festival fragrance. It is patchouli and fresh bud, um, and it's a female and male fragrance. It was based off of Woodstock 1969. Replica fragrances do that for those of you who don't know. It's like a whole background story behind the fragrance, which I think is kind of cool. I'm a sucker for stuff like that. If you don't like patchouli, don't even bother with this because it's heavily patchouli fragrance but it is definitely like a sweeter patchouli like on me once it settles it is musky and spicy but there is a touch of sweetness and I actually also really like mixing this in with other perfumes that I have so if something I have is just super super sweet or just vanilla I'll pop this on and add a little bit of the vanilla and it smells so good but I've really really been into this one and I think going into fall and winter it's gonna be a great scent. I have a couple other favorites and they all have to do with my current fitness journey. Truth be told, I've been on a fitness journey pretty much my entire life, like since the tender age of 12. But right now, the focus of my fitness journey is not just to lose weight, it's really just to be healthy, create healthy, lifelong maintainable goals and habits and to be strong i really like having muscle definition and just seeing my body change rather than the number on the scale go down although of course that is a little bit of a motivating factor i have been trying to cut out sugar and i'm not a big soda drinker but sometimes i just crave sugar um, like after a meal or something. Um, this is Mio, this is Crystal Light, and they're basically saturated flavor drops that you can squirt into anything and flavor it up. So I have been popping these into just plain, unsweetened, blah, sparkling water. It can be a flavored sparkling water even, but no additives, no sugar, and I'll just pump some of this in there, and it's amazing. They taste so good, and when I drink that, I find that I don't necessarily have the craving to like eat a cookie or like eat something else super sweet. Not all the time. Sometimes you just gotta go get that scoop of ice cream with hot fudge and caramel. But for the most part, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it helps kind of keep me in check and keep my cravings in check. These are my two favorite flavors right now. This is Crystal Light Strawberry Lemonade, and then this one is the Mio Lemonade. They literally have nothing in them, which is so strange because they taste delicious, but like the Crystal Light one, there's no calories. There's 30 milligrams of sodium. 
but then there's nothing else. So this is from PE Science. It's the Prolific Pre-Workout, and I have mine in the flavor cotton candy. Oh my God, it's delicious. But the reason I love this pre-workout is because A, I did a lot of research before I did the whole pre-workout situation because I didn't want to mess my body up, but it doesn't give you like itchy skin and it doesn't give you any of those like jitteries or anything else that's super intense that other pre-workouts will sometimes give you. I know some people love that. I'm not about that. I think it would make me panic. Um, but this one just gives me energy. It does have caffeine in it, so it's going to give you energy, but caffeine is actually also a pain inhibitor, which is why, like, for example, Excedrin has caffeine in it. So it allows you to go a little bit further than maybe you would normally because the natural body and muscle pain that you would feel is a little subdued thanks to the caffeine. If you have already like pre-existing medical issues, get that cleared up. The PE Science one I feel is more natural than some of the other ones. Like the ingredients list is way shorter than other pre-workouts. It comes with the scooper inside into eight to 10 ounces of water or more, and then you drink it before you work out. I actually, nine times out of 10, will use half a scoop, but sometimes I will use a full scoop and nothing bad happens. Now it's almost like a mental training where the moment I taste the pre-workout, I'm like ready to go. You know, mental physical, emotional, it's all very tied in to the fitness journey for me at least. So it all makes a difference and this has just been helping me kind of look forward to waking up in the morning, drinking that and then going and working out. That brings me to the end of my July favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below for me and let me know what products you've been loving recently so hopefully I can try out some new goodies. But until my next video, thank you guys as always so much for tuning in and I'll catch you soon. Bye.